Hello and welcome to the second FMSP Further Mathematics Prerequisites video. If you are studying Further Mathematics alongside Mathematics A-Level, there are just a few topics where Further Maths needs content from Maths which you might not yet have covered. These videos are designed to support your independent study of this content so that you are ready for your Further Mathematics lessons. This shows what you should already know from AS Mathematics and GCSE. It's a good idea to have these things to hand as you work through the video, so pause the recording now and go and get everything together. Make sure you've set aside sufficient time to tackle the questions, as well as watching the video. This is what we'll be covering in this video. We're going to start by deriving the formulae using this diagram. We're going to work out an expression for sine of a plus b in terms of sine a, sine b, cos a and cos b. Look at triangle OPQ. You'll see that OQ is marked with length 1 and that means that OP is equal to 1 cos b. Now look at triangle OPR. We've seen that length P is equal to cos B and therefore RP is going to be cos B, the hypotenuse, multiplied by sine A. Now look back at triangle OPQ again. We want to find the length PQ and that is equal to 1 sine b. Now look at triangle PQT. We've just found length PQ. It's sine b. The angle at T is a right angle and the angle at P is the same as angle A. That means that length PT is equal to sine B, the hypotenuse, multiplied by cos A. Pause the recording for a moment while you check that you agree with all of these. Now we can look at length QH. You can see from the diagram that QH is the same as RT and therefore equal to RP plus PT. We found both of these lengths already. The angle at H is a right angle and if we look at triangle OQH with hypotenuse OQ which is equal to 1, you'll see that QH is equal to sine of A plus B. RP, we've already worked out, is cos B sine A, which I'll write the other way round. And PT is equal to sine B cos A. And there is our first addition formula. Sine of A plus B is equal to sine A cos B plus sine B cos A. Now we're going to find an expression for cos of a plus b. You may want to pause the video first and try this for yourself. I'll give a hint next before going through it. Okay, so if you're trying to do this on your own but you want a hint, you should notice that cos of a plus b is the length oh. So that's the hint. So if you think you can do it for yourself now, pause the video and have a go before you watch me do it. OK, so to check your work, or if you weren't sure what to do, here's the derivation. For the length OR, we've already worked out previously that OP is equal to cos B. This is a right angle down here at R and looking at the triangle OPR 
we can see that our OR is equal to cos B, the hypotenuse, multiplied by cos A. Now look at QT at the top of the diagram. We're going to use triangle PTQ again. We worked out that PQ was equal to sine B. And that the angle at P was equal to A. So therefore QT is equal to the hypotenuse sine B multiplied by sine A. If you look at the diagram, you'll see we've got plenty of right angles, so the length HR is the same as QT. The length I said we wanted was OH, and that's equal to OR minus HR. So OH is cos of A plus B. And that's equal to OR, which we've just worked out is cos B cos A, which I'll write the other way around, cos A cos B. Take away HR, which is the same as QT, and that's sine B sine A, which I'll also write the other way around. And this is our second addition formula. If we replace B with minus B, then we can get two new versions of this. You'll remember that cos of minus B is the same as cos of B, so we'll have sine A cos B as before. But sine of minus B is minus sine of B, so we'll have minus cos A sine B. For cos of A minus B, Again, cos of minus b is the same as cos of b, so the first term doesn't change. And sine of minus b is minus sine of b, which changes that minus sign into a plus sign. These formulae are both in your formula books, in both versions, with plus and minus. Note with the cos one that we've got that minus plus sign here. Pause the video and find these formulae in your formula book now, so that you know where they are. OK, some common variants. Sine of 2a is sine a cos a plus cos a sine a. So that's just two lots of sine a cos a. And cos of 2a is cos a cos a minus sine a sine a, or cos squared a minus sine squared a. These are easy to work out, but they're also very easy to remember, so you probably won't need to work them out. There are a couple of extra versions of the formula for cos of 2a, which are extremely important in calculus work. You won't need them until the second year of further mathematics, but that will probably still be before you cover them in mathematics, so we'll look at them now. We'll look at deriving both of these. We're starting with cos squared a minus sine squared a from the previous slide. And we're going to replace the sine squared a with 1 minus cos squared a from the Pythagorean identity that you know from AS Maths. Simplifying this just gives us 2 cos squared a minus 1. Similarly, we can replace cos squared a with 1 minus sine squared a. And simplifying that gives us 1 minus 2 sine squared a. Now it's very easy to half remember these, but rather harder to remember which way round they go. So you have a choice. You either need to learn them or you need to remember that they exist and be able to derive them quickly. Well, why do you need to know these? Let's look at some examples. OK, we can use them to solve equations. I've got sine 2x and cos x. 
so I've got two different inputs. We want to change to using the same inputs, so we'll change sine 2x to 2 sine x cos x. Now, the really important thing here is don't divide through by cos x. That's because cos x might be zero. And dividing by cos x will mean you lose a solution. You lose the solution where cos x equals zero. You won't get an impossible situation as you sometimes get when dividing by zero but you will lose a solution and that will lose you marks in the exam. So instead of dividing by cos x, we'll subtract cos x from both sides. And set that equal to zero. And then I can take cos x out as a factor. Now we can deal with the two cases separately. Either cos x equals zero or two sine x minus one equals zero. In other words, sine x is a half. And that gives me that x is 90 degrees or 270 degrees from cos x equals zero or 30 degrees or 150 degrees from sine x being equal to a half. OK, here's one for you to try. Pause the video and try this for yourself before watching the solution. OK, if you've had a go yourself, here's the solution. We've got the expression cos 3 theta cos theta minus sine 3 theta sine theta. Well, that looks to me like cos A cos B minus sine A sine B, where A is 3 theta and B is theta. So that must be equal to cos of A plus B. So that's cos of 3 theta plus theta. And that's cos of 4 theta, which is answer D. One more for you to have a go at. Pause the video and have a go at this yourself first. Right, here's the solution then. Cos of 2 theta equals sine theta. We'll use 1 minus 2 sine squared theta so that I've got all sines rather than a mix of sines and coses. So 1 minus 2 sine squared theta equals sine theta. I'm going to collect on the left hand side, but then swap them round. So that's 2 sine squared theta plus sine theta minus 1 equals 0. This is a quadratic equation in sine theta. 2 sine theta minus 1 sine theta plus 1 equals 0. So from that we get that sine theta is equal to a half or sine theta is equal to minus one. And that means that theta is equal to pi over six or five pi over six or three pi over two. And again, we know we have to work in radians because we're told that theta is between zero and two pi. So that's answer A. I hope you found this video useful. That's all the prerequisites for AS Further Mathematics. If you continue to the full A level, there will be more videos to help you prepare.